Uh, okay, cool, that sounds like I'm mic'd for sure. Um, hi guys, sorry we're getting started a little late, technical difficulties at a tech conference, makes sense. Um, so hi, I'm Sasha, Sasha Grodzins. I'm a Chicago native, a dev bootcamp graduate. Um, yeah, and I've been working as a developer at a consultancy called DevMind Software, also in Chicago and San Francisco. Uh, if you wanna find me online, I am Sassy Grody pretty much everywhere. Um, okay, yeah, welcome. Thanks for coming to build a blog in 15, more like 30 minutes. Um, this is the Webpacker edition, and I also just added GraphQL to the title because that's what we're using, uh, which has been a common theme throughout the past few days. Um, another common theme I found is like a theme of nostalgia about Rails, uh, with like the history of Rails track and all that. So. This is also fits in there. It's an ode to DHH's uh, presentation of the same name, where he presented Ruby on Rails to the world back in 2005, I believe. Um, so there he live codes this um, presentation where he builds a blog with posts, comments, pagination, and like adds some tests at the end, and he does it in 15 minutes. So that's been like blowing people's minds for over a decade and like has been a tutorial and reference since. Uh, so what is this talk? This talk, we're also going to build a blog. Um, it's not going to be as revolutionary or fast, hence the title. Um, and we're gonna be using a React front end, a GraphQL back end, and I'm gonna show how you like get that all hooked up in a single Rails application. Um, that link is not active yet, so sorry about that. Just ignore it. <laughs> uh, it will be on GitHub as soon as I'm up off the stage. <laughs> um, Okay, so welcome Webpack. Um, for the past few years, my company has been building with these tools. Um, and I remember like the first time we set up an app, uh, we had a front-end app and a back-end app. One was React and one was our Rails API. And it took a full work day, if not longer, to get it all hooked up and talking to each other and displaying data on a page, um, just because like the configuration like added so much overhead. Um, but then Rails 5 was released and Webpacker made its debut um, and changed everything. It like, you could initialize a Rails app with pretty much no configuration uh, and have React, or I'm sorry, we could have like any JavaScript library just configured uh, to run in your application. So that was great. Um, I have to be honest, I'm working without my speaker notes, so that's why I'm like kind of struggling right for this moment. But anyway, yeah, Webpacker came out, and it was awesome. <laughs> I think that's all I had to say about that. So what are we doing? I wanna just go over what our, um, what our tools are right now. So we're gonna use React to build all of our views. Um, the definition of React from the docs is a JavaScript library to build user interfaces. Um, yeah, it's a view library, it is the client, it is a front end, uh, all those things. What is GraphQL? Uh, GraphQL, again, from the docs, a query language for your API. Um, what does that mean? I think the thing to think about here is that React and GraphQL were created by Facebook, um, and they, you know, as they're becoming one of the biggest companies in the world, face some problems with traditional REST APIs and you know, jQuery madness kinds of things, so they created these libraries. Um, the, like, most notable thing about GraphQL is that it uses a single endpoint. This is not a single endpoint. This is a RESTful API. Um, it's a screenshot straight from the Rails doc, so it should look familiar. Um, so yeah, the way RESTful APIs work is you have different endpoints for like each action you want to perform and each view you want to show. So if I wanted to get a single article, um, I'd just have to make a request, an HTTP request to get article slash ID pass the ID in as a parameter somewhere. Um, and what I expect back from that, from a Rails application, is like a full active record object, which would be the ID, any like fields I migrated onto it and created at updated timestamps. Um, so like that's a lot of data and I might not always need that. So GraphQL solves this in having a single endpoint. So here we see post slash GraphQL. That is the only way to get data uh, in and out of your, your backend. Um, 
So the way that works is you make your HTTP request um, to the single endpoint, GraphQL, and you pass in a GraphQL query uh, that looks exactly like this, shaped like json -y kind of structure. Um, so if I wanted to get the same data I just mentioned before from a graph API, I'd say I need a post with an ID and then the specific fields of data that I want to display on the uh, page. So in this case, I'd only get a title back. I wouldn't get ID or timestamps or anything else from that object. So that's really nice um, because it is small contained pieces of data and it makes everything very predictable. Um, how does it work? Um, this is a big talk, so maybe you've been to a GraphQL talk in the past few days, and if you have, that's awesome. Um, but just a little overview, there's the idea of types and mutations in GraphQL. So a GraphQL type corresponds to um, some piece of information in the back end that you want to expose to the front end. So in our case today, it's going to correspond to an active record model. Um, and the mutations um, specify which parts of the data in the back end you want to change. Um, so because you only have a post request that you can make, you have to say whether or not you want to get data or you want to change data via a type or a mutation. Okay, so the other reason this isn't going to be as like fast and cool as DHH's talk is because I've already done some setup. Um, I did uh, the Rails new command with the Webpack extension where we're gonna use React as our front end. That took like close to three minutes to run in this Wi-Fi, so I'm glad I did that. Um, I also added the GraphQL library in the gem file and I bundled, um, hopefully everyone's seen a bundle, it's not very exciting. Um, I did run the Rails G GraphQL install command, which is actually a really cool command, I'm sorry you don't get to see that today. But that's the thing that basically sets up the whole API. It adds a line to our routes for this post GraphQL endpoint. Um, it sets up the controller with a single method for that endpoint to hit. And it sets up some root type and mutations for us. Pretty nice, we'll see all that in a second. Uh, I added a model already, the post model, and I seeded some data because you also don't need to watch me do that. And, ooh, uh, is that so loud? I, um, added a single view page so that when we hit logo host slash root, um, we don't get the like Rails friends image, no matter how cute it is, I, we don't need it. Uh, all right, that's it, that's it for these slides. Get out of here. Um, all right, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start the server. So because we have our Webpack server and our Rails server, we have to start both. So we'll say Rails server. How's that uh, font size, everybody? You good? Nice, nice, thanks. <laughs> okay, and then on this side, we're gonna use the built-in command, which is dot slash bin slash webpack dev server. You can add um, a shortcut in your package JSON to get like a faster, shorter thing, but I'm gonna keep everything as default as I can. Um, okay, so it looks like those, oh, oh my god, that's like a lot of tabs. How embarrassing. <laughs> um, okay. Cool, so localhost is up and running. It says hello from the index. I added that um, to my single Rails view page. So if I go in my views, I've got this index. Hello from the index. Uh, so this is a Rails, a normal Rails view. It's ERB um, with a little bit of, little bit of text in it. But like I said, I want all of our views to be built using React. So I'm gonna go try to find my React files. Is this, this is probably like impossible to see, so sorry. But on the side, we've got our normal app structure in this file system tree. Um, but the Webpacker command at the installation process added a JavaScript folder. Um, and it has two, uh, I'm sorry, it has a single folder called packs and two files in it. Uh, the one we're gonna be using today is called Hello React. So this was just generated for me. I haven't touched this since I ran Rails new. Um, and this is, you know, a React uh, root node is what we like to call these, where like you are finding a document, uh, appending some stuff, and that's where all of your React uh, content is going to live. Um, 
So they've got this demo here, and it says at the top, like, you know, grab this ooh, tag and put it in any of your layouts. So I'm gonna put it in this application thing that I'm calling my layout. So JavaScript back tag, hello React. So if I refresh the page, I get a new piece of information there. It says hello React, uh, and that's coming from the component that was generated for me. So here's this hello, and it's like calling props.name, and name is sent down here, so it's like hello RailsConf. Save it, go back. I didn't hit refresh, it's hot reloading for me, which is also really great. Hello RailsConf. Um, so basically what I'm just proving here is that React is loading and I didn't do anything really, which is awesome. Um, the next thing I wanna do, so we're building a blog, right? I need to build a blog container. So I'm gonna make a file called blog container, just .js. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do a lot of to speed up time is use snippets, so like, bear with me. You don't need to see me type out all these words and kind of fat finger everywhere. Um, there will probably be some typos, so watch out. Uh, all right, so I'm going to define a ES6 class called blog container that extends React component. Uh, I'm importing a component from the React library itself. Um, so this is a React component and what they look like. They have this render function because the whole point of a React component is to render stuff. Uh, so this is just a JavaScript function and it has this explicit return because we're in JavaScript. And this, um, what it's returning is called JSX, and JSX is the templating language used in React. It looks a lot like HTML, so it's like really easy to write in. Um, uh, but it has like full JavaScript capabilities and a lot of built-in properties that are very helpful to us. Um, so I have defined this blog container, but I'm not rendering it anywhere, so I wanna render it into uh, my like root node, my blog container, I'm gonna import from blog container. And this stuff like, I mean, I'm just gonna delete it for now, we don't need it. Instead of rendering the generated little tiny component, I'm going to render my blog container. So at this point we should see, you know, whatever is in the blog container on the page. Yeah, okay, great, it's very good. <laughs> It looks still so bad because of this thing. I'm gonna get rid of this. And now we have a full, I mean, our only view is a React view. And so we're gonna just continue to build only in the blog container. Um, so what's a blog without posts? It's nothing. So we need to find a way to get some data onto this page. And the way we're gonna do that is by making a request to our GraphQL backend uh, from our client here. So we need to go back to our GraphQL and set some things up. So as I mentioned, the uh, GraphQL installation added this GraphQL folder and then two folders within for mutations and types. That's where we're gonna keep our data, or, you know, our definitions of these GraphQL types. Um, so if I look here, there's a query type, it's a mutation type, with a bunch of like test fields, you know, we could play with those, but I'm gonna skip over them for now. Um, what I need is I need something, I need a new type. These things are working off of default type strings, so this test field um, is returning ooh, some kind of default uh, GraphQL type, a string. As you can see here, that string is hello world. Um, so I need to define a new type. I mentioned everything is built off of types and mutations. So there is luckily a command for this as well. No, wait, GraphQL at object. Cool. Yeah, so this will be a post, capital P post with a title. These things are going to correspond to what's in my database because that's what I want to be uh, available to me on the front end. Uh, okay, cool, so it made a single file called post type. I'm gonna go look for that, here it is. So it, there, it just, generated this big thing for me, which is awesome, and I know that I have a post type now, a GraphQL type called post type, and it has these fields on it. So what do I need to do with them? I need to expose them to like the root layer of my API. So the way you do that is you define a field here, and whatever you wanna call that. I'm gonna call it posts. 
I want a list of posts. So I'm going to say this new type I just added is post type. And then part of the DSL, like the, the GraphQL library, comes with this to list type uh, method. So that'll basically just return a, an array of post types, however many I'm going to get in my resolve block. Oops, not that. Uh, list of posts. So the like, other really cool thing about GraphQL is that it's pretty much self-documenting based on just what I write here. Like, you know what you're going to get because I just said I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to return a list of posts. Um, so this is a resolve uh, block. It's a lambda, and it uh, has these three things that are coming back from the GraphQL controller itself. But it doesn't really matter because all I want from here is an active record call that is post.all. I want all the posts. I don't care what order they're in. I don't care anything about them. It's what I want. <laughs> Um, so, there's another really cool thing about GraphQL. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, I can't remember. But it did also initialize with this other route called GraphEQL or Graphical, whoever you are, however you want to say it, it's fine. Um, and this is an in-editor IDE for you to test out your queries that you write. So like the query we, the query we just wrote. Uh, is that okay? Okay. <laughs> That's the best kind of feedback. Um, okay, cool. So, well, pretend like I hadn't written that yet. So this is a documentation explorer. It's a great name for it because that's exactly what it is. Um, you see it has your root types here of query and mutation. So I can click into this and say, like, what do I have available to me in my GraphQL API? Um, that is posts, two fields. There's posts and there's test field. And we can see over here on this root query type that we have these two fields, post and test field. So, okay, so I don't actually think I've mentioned anything about this. This is a GraphQL query over here. This is exactly what we're going to ask the database for. So I start typing. It's very, very helpful in that it tells me what I can type, basically. Like I can type an A and it'll say like, oh, there's nothing with that. What do, what do you want, really? <laughs> and I'll be like, I want titles. Um, so it looks like I'm getting some data, right? There are a couple of blog posts that I seeded, as I mentioned. Uh, two of them are just uh, things that I wrote. One of them is a real blog post from the DevMind blog. Um, so that's great. Like this is a JSON looking object. I feel like I know how to work with that. Um, and I'm only getting titles, which is exactly what I asked for. Um, if I wanted content as well, I'd have to put content in there explicitly so that the API knows what to get. Um, you know, we could get all three of the things ID, but I really can just look at some titles right now. Uh, yeah, so what do we do with this type? What do we do with this query? I'm actually trying to remember. Uh, so we're going to go to our JavaScript again. We're going to flip back to our React. Uh, this is our blog post container. It doesn't do anything. and Really what we need it to do right now is go make a request to our API. So I'm going to define a function called get all posts. Uh, whoa. Again. So these uh, functions are available to like within the component. They're just scoped functions to this blog container component. So get all posts. Um, I didn't want to add any more libraries, this is just the basic config. So we're gonna use the fetch API. Here's a nice big snippet for you. Um, so the fetch API is just you know built into React right now, um, which is great. So you can make any kind of HTTP request with the fetch. You just specify the URL here, GraphQL. Uh, the method, we know it's gonna be a post. Uh, headers, and then in the body, this is where you're going to set your, J, uh, your GraphQL query. Um, so you just kind of, you give it a key, give it a string, and then I'm going to literally copy this GraphQL query I was playing with in GraphEQL and paste it. That's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm going to, you know, resolve the promises, fetch returns a promise, you have to resolve it once to JSON and then you resolve it again. And we'll see what we get uh, in this last part here. Ooh. 
Okay, so I'm not hitting the debugger because I'm not actually calling this function anywhere. Uh, so where do I want to call this function? Um, I want this data and this fetch request to have been called before the page renders. So components have um, these things called lifecycle methods. And we're going to use component did mount. There are a couple of them and they're totally worth reading about and they're very helpful. Um, component did mount, and I'm going to have component did mount call get all posts. Um, so this will call before, oh, oh so fast. Uh, it'll call before the render loads. Uh, as you kind of just saw there, like it's just like pops open here. So I'm in my debugger. This is uh, like too big to even operate in. What do I have? So I have this response data and it's got posts, yes, okay. So I've got an array of posts coming through at the end of that fetch, which is awesome because that's exactly the data that I wanna show uh, in my, you know, in my uh, app. So what do I do with this data? I'm here, I've got response, data, posts. Uh, that's an array, so I need to have that accessible to the render method. Um, the way I'm gonna do that is use another um, built-in React function called state. So, or a React property, I'm not really sure what you wanna call this, but state is built into every React component as well, so you can pretty much hold anything you want in state. I'm gonna hold posts here and just set it as an empty array. So this is like my initialization of the state of the React components, so like there's nothing there. I can't just call this get all posts here because that's not how state works. Um, so the order in which things are going to work is the component's going to load from the root node, it's going to call state, state will be set to this.state.post as an empty array. Um, component did mount is going to call next, and it's going to call this.getAllPosts, that'll call our fetch method, and at the very end, we're going to reset the state, reassign that empty array into actually having data, so we'll say posts, uh, response, data posts. Uh, so then state is available to every part of the component, so I can say, oh, not that, post equals this.state.post. So this const should be an array of those posts from the database. And then I'm gonna just iterate over them in the JSX, so to evaluate any JavaScript you use to curly braces in JSX. And we can just use an, you know, a normal ES6 map for a single post and give it an index. Um, syntax looks okay. Oh no, that's, that's gonna be too big. Oh no. All right, so then, right, it looks like HTML, it's not HTML, it's JSX, so you do curly braces to evaluate the post title. Uh, all right, cross your fingers, guys, what do we have? What do we have? Oh yes, we've got a list of titles. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, great. So like that still feels good. I've been doing this for a really long time and it still feels very good. <laughs> and like such a relief. Um, okay, what do we wanna do? Uh, actually, I wanna show um, the post content as well. So like everything's going to be, be on a single page. I don't have a router, so we're not gonna have like a show page. It's just all gonna be right there on the single page. So I'll do this, okay. Uh, great, adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in enclosing tag. Learning a little bit about JSX here. That just means that you can't have two siblings like right there next to each other. They need to be wrapped in something. I'm gonna wrap them in a div. You could wrap them in whatever you want. Uh, and then that should load properly. But we don't have any content. Uh, maybe you know why, but the reason we don't is because I'm not asking for it yet. The GraphQL query is like, you didn't ask for content, I'm not gonna give you any content. So I need to put it in the query, and then if I come back, now we have some content. Uh, so that looks like garbage, but there's no styling, and there's not going to be um, in this talk. <laughs> so just hold tight, you know, at least there's data. Uh, cool, okay, so we are rendering blog posts. I think that's really great. So we know how to get database from our back end. Now we need to learn how to um, change some data. So I know this is called a CRUD app, but we're going to go out of order and we're going to do the D of CRUD first. So we're going to delete. Um, 
really like when it comes down to it, the other thing about the GraphQL is that you only have a mutation and a query. You don't have CRUD, you don't have gets and posts and puts and patches and those deletes, you only have one thing. So it's not exactly CRUD anymore. Like the definition of CRUD is a little different now. But let's do this. What am I doing? Um, need a delete link. So I know that the delete link itself is going to uh, make another fetch request. So just to keep it like contained, I'm going to make a new component for delete link. Call it delete link. Uh, and I'm just going to put the word delete there. And I'll give it a class, which is, you know, link. Um, then I'm going to render it. I'm going to render it in the blog container, import, delete, link, um, delete link. I'm going to render it right below the post title. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So now each, each row of posts has a delete. Uh, it does not look like a link. I'm going to just very quickly change that because uh, I think that's too crazy. Uh, that link, we'll say links are usually blue. And this stuff can be up front too. So the other really cool thing about having your React app in your Rails app is that you get the asset pipeline, which we all know and love, and I like that a lot. So cool, this thing doesn't do anything. It's a div that's styled to look like a link. What I wanna do is give it an on-click handler to call a function called like handle delete. Um, I'll define handle delete as a function again in this component. And we're gonna make another fetch request. So the same thing, the same structure, but now we need to make a different kind of query. Essentially here we need to make a query for mutation. Uh, and we don't have any mutations, so we have to go back to GraphQL now. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, GraphQL mutations. Yeah, mutations are empty. So I'm going to create Rails G GraphQL mutation, uh, and it's going to be delete underscore post. Um, that's just the way it's going to be. So that added a couple of things here for us. It added a file under mutations, delete post. So this is not the same kind of definition we've been seeing. The post type itself was just a GraphQL object type, whereas the delete post mutation is uh, built off of a different uh, module. But it looks kind of similar in a lot of ways, so it's, it's actually really nice. Um, the other thing it did is it added, oh, I'm just gonna delete this. Yeah, I'm gonna remove you. Uh, it added the field for me on the mutation root type. Uh, so delete post, you know, has a field now on this mutation type. Um, okay, so let's see. This thing has directions for me. It says to do, define your return fields. So it's suggesting I return a post, but uh, because I'm deleting here, I'm actually just gonna return a message and I'm gonna use the default uh, ooh, graphical type of a string because I'm just gonna say, at the end of this, uh, you know, if all goes plan, message, post was deleted. That's what I wanna see somewhere, probably in a flash message eventually, but maybe just in the console for now. Um, and then the next thing is see, to do, define argument. So input field name type string. This also doesn't feel quite right, because when we delete, we usually delete by finding things by ID and then deleting the object that we found. So the input field, is going to be an ID, and again, we can use the generic GraphQL types of ID. Um, to do, resolve the function. So again, let's just do some active record stuff. Uh, let's find by the ID, which I'm gonna pass through in the args, kind of like how we saw in the query before. And then we'll just, I'm just gonna destroy that post. No questions, I spell that wrong? Destroy, cool. Destory happens to me all the time. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna assume that works. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put the bang. So let's see, we can use graph EQL to test that out again. If I refresh this page, look at our mut um, mutations. 
we have a single field for delete post. Um, and it takes input. So I think the same way that I created the query over here, I can do the same. Start typing delete post, uh, input, and the input type is an ID, right? So I'm gonna delete the first one. Let's see. Okay, so I just took a guess there. I assumed there was a post with the ID of one. <laughs> Uh, but it does say that the post was deleted. So if we go back to our front end and we refresh, there are only two, um, which is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, cool, so I'm gonna do the same thing where I copy this mutation, put it uh, into the delete link uh, query. Uh, and I don't want to hard code this, so like somehow I need to get the post ID. Um, the way I'm going to do that is if I go back to the blog container, um, we're iterating through these posts, right? So this is like a post row, and the, the div itself is contained to a specific post. So I can send in a property called post ID, um, which would be post dot ID. This isn't gonna work immediately because I'm not requesting the ID. So if I want to do that, I have to put it here. Um, so now I'm calling all three of the fields that are available to me. I'll have that um, in my response and I can send it through to the delete link. So the delete link can access these kind of properties via uh, a call that looks like this, this.props.postID. Uh, so that's how you can pass data from your parent down to your child. And that's a very common pattern in React, um, like precisely for this kind of demonstration. Um, let's see, so we're gonna get our response back. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully we get a message here, right? So we'll console log the message. We don't really have state in this component. This component is just a, a link. So I'm not gonna try to set the state here, but I do really want to, reload the posts at the end of this because I don't want to hit refresh um, when my posts are deleted. So I can actually just demonstrate, let's see where we're at here. If I open this, oh, okay. Well, that's just a warning, I'll fix it in a second. If we hit delete, uh-oh, got an undefined, means it didn't work, right? Oh, it did work, wow. Okay, so now we only have one post, the delete is working. <laughs> I am surprised. Um, mostly I'm just thrown off by that huge, gross warning. So I'm gonna fix that. It's, that warning is saying that when you iterate over things, you need to pass in a key with a unique uh, value. So I'm gonna use the index of the map. That'll be pretty unique. It's not wor that warning is gone, which is great. Uh, if I hit delete again, hit refresh. Now I don't have any more, um, any more posts to work with, so I have to reseed. <laughs> Okay, great, I'm actually gonna see it again. Let's do it, let's get a bunch of them. <laughs> cool, okay, so we have like six, can I count? Yeah. Um, okay, so right, I'm hitting delete and then I have to hit refresh to get like a new list of posts back because the front end doesn't know what to do yet. So, if I go back to my delete link, I've already written this function somewhere, right? The this.getAllPosts. Um, but that is not available to this component because that is defined in its parent. So much like how we passed down the property for post ID, I'm gonna pass down this function as a property. So it's called get all post. Uh, this dot get all post. So then I can go back to my delete link and again call it via props dot get all post. So not, you can pass like pretty much anything down from a parent to a child via props there. Uh, that's a function we passed like strings, you can pass whatever you want. Um, let's see, let's see where we're at. If I close that and hit delete, yes! Woo, okay, so that thing is deleted out of the database and I'm gonna do a couple more because there are too many. Um, awesome, that's deleting. We have, I'm like stunned because I still have time and like every time I've gone through this, I've run out of time before I got here. <laughs> so 
So cheers to talking really fast uh, and for things going pretty well. Mm. <clears throat> Let's see. I guess we should just keep going. We may as well do create. <laughs> Um, oh, I don't know, that sounds like kind of ambitious, but let's try it, let's see how far we get. Um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna like check all this out. So everything on here is going to be in a branch eventually. Um, I'm sorry, not a branch, a uh, Git repo, and, oh, not that. Everything is like branched out pretty precisely, so if you wanted to check out different spots um, of the tutorial that will be available, you could start from like wherever you wanted. They build on each other. So like in this uh, tutorial, it's gonna go C first, C of CRUD to, or R of CRUD to C of CRUD to U of CRUD to D of CRUD. Um, I find that to be like the most normal way to build your application, but I started with D today because why not spice it up? Uh, but if we wanna see C, let's just like get check out uh, C of CRUD start. No, let's just see what it looks like completed. Why not? Uh, all right, let's refresh. That's what I'll do, I'll just go through all the branches. Okay, so here I did add a form. Uh, this form lives in its own component. Let me see where are we at, form. Uh, so again, it's just a little component. Um, it has some state for title and content. This is like, exactly how the docs of React tell you to make a form, so there's plenty of information about like why this is how it's set up, but um, forms, again, look a lot like HTML, but they have all of these handlers and properties that help like set the state and make changes and submit uh, data. So these inputs, uh, this on change, we're calling this handle, input change, and handle input change is just resetting the state. Um, so for us, when we are creating our mutation, we're gonna send along the title and content from the state that is the title and content that is here. So like, hello. Um, right, okay, so nothing's happening because we don't have a create mutation. So let's see, oh, shoot, yeah we do. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so I've already created my create mutation. Let's just go look at it. Create post. So I did this the same way I made my delete post, which was Rails G GraphQL uh, mutation create post. Uh, this one you can see like has a return field for the post type, uh, unlike delete, which was a return field of a message, I think is what I did. Um, this one has input field for title and content. And here the resolve block, again, active record, whatever you want to do from your mutation is we're gonna create a post. So we create a post with the title and content that comes through in the arguments again. Uh, and actually that's like, a, oops, visible to us here. This fetch has a mutation called create post, title, content. They all start to look a lot alike, if you can't tell already. <laughs> um, let's see, let's check out. This might be the end of it. This might just be like everything working. So we have this delete, I can delete things, and I can edit. So the way I chose to edit for the sake of this demo was um, to do it on the same page, right? Like I, I said, I don't have a router, I don't wanna like have a page just to view an edit form, so you can edit and, uh, oh, tips for petting uh, every dog on the street or something like that, I wrote that. Um, you can edit this, just be like, woo, that says phew, but you know, I do mean woo. Uh, and then it edits in place. <laughs> um, so that is more or less the completed CRUD application that I meant to demonstrate today. Um, and that's it, actually. So thank you so much for coming. Guys, I had a blast. I hope you did too. <laughs>